I can assist you or tutor you more. If you have more questions, just email me. All right, last chapter, chapter 10, you've made it. Well, you still got some way to go, but you're almost there. So chapter 10 is mostly about moment of inertia. That's the main focus. Um, it's the last chapter of the book. Usually I don't think professor will go on to energy. But um, this is the one that would require you to use uh, um, calculus the most, more than centroid, I would say. And um, and try to do some of the questions like this because it really trying to, you know, allows you to manipulate calculus and get used to it, right? It's more about the math in this unit rather than understanding the physics, right? Because in 2D area, moment of inertia doesn't really have a meaning to it. I mean, it will be used in fluids or any other, um, like, mechanical designs, but in 2D, you know, shape like this, uh, it, does, it you know, doesn't mean anything, really. But, um, yeah, so let's get started. Uh, we're calculating the moment of inertia of Ix, right? So we're using the equation over here. Um, so the way to remember I remembered it, I, how I memorized it is the this is always uh, so the x is all it's always parallel to the x-axis right so since it's going this way then we have to use the y does that make sense I mean it I don't know it, it makes sense to me okay so uh, so da here so what is da look at over here uh, it's dy times the x right because we're going this way so we're plugging y values to give us x I hope that makes sense so x times oops dy oh, let's change the color real quick so it's x times dy and the sum of that uh, gives you the da right so how because you know this is the entire thing over here simple calculus um, dA dy. So what is x, right? So we have y over here, so we have to write in terms of x, right? In t I mean, it's everything in terms of x. So we have to simplify uh, everything. So if this is just algebra, really, xn. So we're trying to simplify x by itself. So uh, times all the features uh, times square root. I mean 1 over n, so x is gone, and then b is to the power of 1 over n, and a n becomes a, and y equals uh, 1 over n. Yeah, and then times uh, y times a over here, divided by b 1 over n. Whew. And this is the equation we're going to work from now on. So now we, ha we got x, we can plug this back uh, in here to x, and that gives us dA, right? And so now we have dA, now we just have to time the x, y square to get the equation we're trying to work for. So 0 to b, that is our boundary, right, from 0 to b over here, and range for y, right? Um, so it's y squared times uh, a times 1 over n over b over n. Now remember, since we're doing it from the right to left, if we're just doing using this calculation, it will give us the um, area of the white area over here, right? So what we have to do is, well, I should have saved some space over here. Uh, it should have, is using a minus the entire thing, uh, y times this over this. Does that make sense? Because, you know, uh, since it's a, so it's this entire square minus the area of this give us the area of this, right? Or, you know, the shape we're dealing with. Because if we were just move it up to y, it would just be uh, from here to here. That's just how the math works. So simplify everything, uh, b0, so a y square minus um, a times y to the power of n plus 2 right, over b over n, plus 2 because, let's say, a, b times a to the power of c equals a to the power of a plus c. And um, now we just have to do the integral, right? So a 
is the constant, so we can pull, uh, move the a out, a to the power of 3 over 3, uh, this is from 0 to b, minus, uh, so look at all of this, right? So a over b to the power of 1 over n, that's a constant. And then um, this times, let's see, uh, y to the power of 1 over m plus 3, right? Move, uh, you know, integral, move up one value uh, over uh, 1 over m plus 3. Okay, and this is from b to 0. So let's uh, work over here real quick. Uh, a, b, 3 over 3, right? Plug the b in here. We're doing the integral in terms of, uh, terms of, terms of dy over here, right? So plug b in. Uh, this gives you this minus a times a, a over b to the power of 1 over n plus uh, b to the power of 1 over n plus 3 over 1 uh, one over n plus 3, right? Uh, this and, and this part cancels out. So now it's a b over 3, 3 minus a b to the power of 3 over 1 over n plus 3. Okay, and now see that we have the common numerator, so it's we can write it, simplify it down even more, 1 over 3 minus 1 over n plus 3, right? And uh, just to work on this bracket part real quick, we can simplify it, um, 1 over 3 minus 1 over n plus 3, right? This is on the bottom. Uh, we have to find a similar denominator same denominator to continue the calculation. So the denominator, we can simplify, sorry, before we go on, we can simplify this. Let's see. Uh, this can be equal to 1 over n plus 3n over n, right? n equals 3 plus 1, 3n plus 1 over n. So here, and then divide it by this, because AB is divided by that, that this, um, this actually becomes, this whole thing uh, becomes AB3 uh, N over 3 N plus 1. Okay, all right, here we go. Now we can write as this over here, and this is an n on top, and there's a 3n plus 1 over here, right, and we continue, sorry for the mess, I'm kind of late here, so, yeah, 3n plus 1 over 9n plus 3, and minus uh, 3n, uh, 3n plus 3, okay? Now it's 1 over 9 n plus 3, and which we can write, combine this um, with AB, which gives you AB3 over 3 uh, times 3 n plus 1. And that is also the answer in the answer book. But um, yeah, this is a lot of manipulation and calculations. I've actually did this quark problem twice before I made this video, but sorry, I still made a mistake. So yeah, you can see it's... it's uh, it's very troublesome, and it's also 3 o'clock in the morning. But anyway, uh, hopefully this video was helpful. Um, good luck on your studies. I'll see you in my future videos. Bye. If you have more questions, uh, specific questions you would like me to do, please comment in the comment section down below.